What's going on, folks? Welcome to Investing with Matt. Today, we're going to be talking about the four investing accounts that working professionals need to have to build wealth. So let's go ahead and start with number one. Number one is the common workplace investing accounts that most of us are familiar with, and that is the 401ks, the 403bs, or the 457b plans that are available to you from your employer. Now, the reason why I wanted to include this first is number one, most of us are aware of what these accounts are. These are your typical workplace savings retirement accounts that your employer is going to offer you. And a lot of times when you invest in your 401k or 403b or any other workplace retirement savings account, you usually get a match. That means that your employer employer is going to also contribute a little bit of money to match whatever you invest up to a certain percent, right? It can be up to 3%, 5%, 7% in some cases, even maybe 10% in some cases. So that way, if you invest 10%, your company matches every single dollar up to 10%. That means you're gonna be contributing 20% total between you and your employer in your 401k or 403b or another workplace retirement savings account. And this is a great way to build wealth, especially for the long term. Of course, you won't be able to access this money till later in life, the age 59 and a half, that may change. Who knows? We'll see. That doesn't mean that you should not be using these 401k or 403b plans. These are great investing accounts that will help you build wealth. And at the very least, I always say that it's good to invest up to the match because that's basically free money. That's money that your employer is not going to give you unless you contribute your own money into that 401k or 403b or 457b. That's how you're able to get that contribution from your employer. And if you're lucky, maybe you have an automatic contribution from your employer, 1%, 2%, 3% that you can add on top of whatever they're going to match. And for these workplace retirement accounts, you can actually contribute up to $20,500 of your money into that account if you're under the age of 50. If you are 50 and above, you can actually contribute an extra $6,500 up to $27,000 of your own money that you're going to be able to contribute to your workplace retirement account. Now, for those of you who who are self-employed, for those of you who are entrepreneurs, I would personally look at a solo 401k. And this is so easy to open. You can go to Charles Schwab or Vanguard or Fidelity, open a solo 401k. And so the next investing account that I want to talk about is an IRA, an individual retirement arrangement. Most of us know this as an individual retirement account. Yes, you have many different types of IRAs, but the two main types of IRAs that I want to focus on today is the Roth IRA and the traditional IRA. Now with the Roth IRA, you have to be below a certain income to be able to contribute to a Roth IRA. And Roth IRAs are great because you're going to contribute post-tax dollars. That means money that you've already been taxed on that you're going to contribute to a Roth IRA. So it's kind of like a taxable account that you're going to invest in. However, the money in that Roth IRA is going to grow tax-free. And also when you get ready to take the money out, once you reach that retirement age, you're not going to get taxed on the withdrawals. And that is a special, special account that I encourage all of us who have earned income to be able to contribute to, to have an IRA, a Roth IRA. And guess what? If you do not meet that income limit of the Roth IRA, you can actually contribute to a traditional IRA with post-tax dollars, money that you've already been taxed on. And then once you contribute to that traditional IRA, you're actually going to also open a Roth IRA and do what's called a backdoor Roth conversion. And so you just have to call whoever your custodian is for for your IRA and ask them, or you can do it yourself. I've done it myself with a Vanguard IRA just to test it out how that works with my Vanguard IRAs, both a traditional and a Roth IRA. I contributed money to my traditional IRA. And then the next two or three days later, I was actually able to do that backdoor Roth conversion. It was very easy online. And if you need help, again, customer service with a lot of these platforms like Fidelity, Schwab, and Vanguard are great, and they will be happy to help you out. So for you high income earners, yes, you can have a Roth IRA. It's going to be a backdoor Roth IRA, essentially what you're going to be doing, but you can open that traditional IRA, contribute your money to it up to the limits, which I'm going to talk about in a second, and then do that backdoor Roth conversion. Now, contribution limits for your Roth IRA and traditional IRA is going to be $6,000. If you're age 50 and older, you get 
$10,000. You get an additional $1,000 to be able to add to that $6,000 contribution limit. And this is not $6,000 in a Roth IRA and $6,000 in a traditional IRA. It's the combined Roth or traditional IRA and or traditional IRA that you're going to be contributing to. Now, one account that we've started to invest in is called the HSA, the Health Savings Account. If you have a high deductible health plan through your work or you're self-employed, you may be eligible to have an HSA. So you just need to check with your HR, check with your health benefits program to see if you are eligible for an HSA. And what an HSA is, it's a powerful, powerful investment vehicle, also a powerful asset to have for your medical expenses. For single people, you can contribute up to $3,650. And for families, you can contribute up to $7,300. Now I'm going to share a few details of why the HSA is a great account to have and invest in. And number one is the tax benefits. You're not going to pay any federal taxes on that money that you contribute. You're not going to pay any social security tax on the money that you contribute. So you're going to be able to put that money in an HSA. You can invest the money in index funds that should be available through your HSA. Make sure they're low cost, broad based index funds. And then that money is going to grow tax-free as well. And if you take it out for medical expenses anytime, you don't have to pay any taxes on that money that you contribute into your HSA. And that's an awesome thing to have because you're basically going to be able to build wealth through an HSA and for your medical expenses, so many different kinds of medical expenses. You can just do a quick Google search to see what you can pay for through your HSA. But I was able to pay for contact lenses. I was able to pay for glasses and all kinds of different things with my eyes because I have bad eyes that I was able to do with my HSA. And a lot of that money was money that was either being contributed by me or the company I worked for or had grown in the stock market. So I was able to use that money for medical expenses. Anything left, I left it in the HSA and it's continuing to grow. It's continuing to go up and down. But over the long term, I am expecting that money in the HSA to grow significantly, especially later on in my life when I'm in that 50, 60, 60, 70 years of age where I'm going to really need that money for medical expenses. Now, one of the great things about an HSA, and some people argue whether it's good or bad, is that you can actually use that money like a retirement account, like a 401k. After you reach the age of 65, or if you become disabled, you can actually withdraw HSA funds without penalty, but the amount that you're going to withdraw will be taxed as ordinary income. So it's just going to be like a 401k or a 403b. You're not paying taxes today. However, if you are eligible to take money out after the age of 65, or if you become disabled, you will have to pay that ordinary tax income on the money that you take out. So it's a great thing to have because still, again, because you're not paying taxes on the growth of that money through the years, you're only going to be paying taxes on what you take out after the age of 65 or again if you become disabled but again if you take the money out for medical expenses you don't have to worry about your taxes you don't have to worry about paying any penalties at any time whatsoever so please get an hsa make sure you have a high deductible health plan be sure to have a good amount of money in your hsa to cover your deductibles yearly so this is going to be like a high level strategy of using an hsa as an investment retirement account but i know you can do it the next investing account that i really want you to look at is having a taxable account maybe not right now now, but in the future, this is going to be one of those accounts that you're going to have to make sure you're wary of taxes, whatever you may be paying taxes year to year to year. But with tax loss harvesting, with different tax strategies, having a taxable account can actually benefit you in ways that other accounts may not be able to. And so I really want you to focus on those three accounts first, the 401ks, the 403bs, the workplace retirement savings accounts, your IRA, and then also your HSA. But be thinking about a taxable account because this is money that you're going to be able to take out whenever you need. Yes, you might have a tax liability that you're going to have to pay, but there's no penalties. And that's the big thing. There are no penalties for when you take out money from your taxable account. You just have to make sure that you're investing in low cost funds or low cost investments that will not hit you with a lot of taxes that you won't have to pay a lot of fees on and you won't have to pay a lot of taxes on. And that's why I like to have low cost broad based index funds in those kinds of accounts where I'm not going to have to worry about 
about having to pay huge tax bills when I file my taxes, my income tax returns. And you know what makes taxable accounts great is that there are no limits. So you can invest however much money you want to, unlike these tax advantage savings accounts where you do have yearly contribution limits. Be sure when you're using a taxable account to have tax friendly investments in that account. For example, a real estate investment trust index fund or a total bond market index fund are not exactly tax friendly. And those are kinds of funds that I would not put in a taxable account. I might have them in an IRA or my 401k, but I'm not going to put that in a taxable account. However, a U.S. total market index fund or a municipal bond index fund are tax friendly. And those are types of funds that I don't mind having in a taxable account. Now, I do have a bonus investment account for those of you with children. And I want to tell you that having a 529 plan is a great way to invest for your child, for their college and their future, but not just college. The 529 plan is expanding on what you can use that money for. So it is a great investment account. And if you're in a state where you invest in that state's 529 plan, you may benefit from deductions that will help reduce your tax liability. So if you have children, a 529 plan is, for me, in my opinion, the way to go. Now, once you've opened one, two, or all of these different accounts, you're probably wondering what should you invest in? Well, I have a video for you on that. It's on the screen right now. Make sure you click it and go check it out and I'll see you over there.